Welcome to 102 Research and Writing with Logos. One of the greatest realities about Logos Bible software is that not only do you have powerful tools for study, but you also have a large library of incredible books. In fact, Logos does everything you wish your print books could do. You're going to save hours of research time by finding what you need faster. You're going to make new connections, gain fresh insight, and on top of that, find some great tools that are going to help you get organized and write better papers. So that's what this training is designed to help you to do. So to begin, I'm going to go up to the top left of my software where we see the book icon. That is our library. I'm simply going to grab it and drag it down into my workspace so that I can see the panel open and can easily navigate it. Now in the top, you're going to see a search bar. The search bar is a great place to simply search for any book. Um, you could type in an author, you could type in a title, and uh, find the books that you're looking for. At the end of the search bar, you're going to see a total count of your resources. That gives you an idea of how many books you have available to you. To the right of the search bar, your, uh, your library panel probably says, In All Resources. This is a great way to actually narrow down your library. In fact, the current view that I have on my screen, you'll see is actually the cover view, which is great because you know I like looking at the pictures of the books. The problem is I don't have time to look through all 800 of these to find the books that I need. So we could, for example, simply go to our apologetics books and look through those and find the one that I'm looking for. Now I will show you later in this training how to create these collections or these, I like to call them bookshelves, where you can actually go to the apologetic section or you can go to the Romans section of your library as opposed to having to look through all 800, maybe even thousands of books that you have in Lagos. Next, after all resources, it says by recent. So this is how your books are going to be ordered. So recent are obviously going to be those that you went to um, most recently. I like to keep mine set at most used because that brings up to the top uh, the books that I use the most often. And those are probably the primary ones that I'm looking for when I go to my library. To the right of that, we have the views options. So see, there's three different ways you can view your library. First of all, you have the cover view, which is active on my screen, uh, which is basically the way that you can look at the cover of a book which once again is great if you only have a few books because we can usually identify the one we want pretty quickly. Um, but there's not a lot of information actually provided with this view. So an uh, even better view would be the second one called the tile view. So you'll see the tile view has not only the book cover, it has the title, it has a rating, it has the type of book that it is, and it even has what we call community tags, uh, ways that the book has been tagged and identified by the Logos community. So this is a far superior uh, view if I'm actually needing more content about the books that I have. The third view, which is what we're going to spend most of our time using during this training, is what's called the details view. The details view goes even further um, than our second one, the tile view, and provides really just about any kind of information you would want in these different columns. Now, please take note. These different columns that you see on my screen may or may not be the same columns that you see on your screen. There's actually several different ways your library can be organized with the details view. You simply need to right click on any of these headings, the header of the column, and you'll see all the different columns that you could add or take away in your view. Simply make sure you select, for example, languages, make sure you select it and there's a check mark next to it and then you will notice that you will have a language column in your details view. That's important so that what I do later uh, makes sense and you can actually replicate it. To the right of the views options you're going to have a little information button. When you click on that I, it's going to open up a small little panel to the right hand side and that allows you to go to any of these books and click on that row and it's going to give you all kinds of information about that specific book. Sometimes by simply looking at the book title and the information, we're not really sure what it is. So this information panel helps provide us with all that kind of content. And we can obviously share about the book on Facebook or find citation information and things like that here in the information panel. To the right of the information button, you also have the, the prioritize option. And we're going to talk later 
uh, in this training about how you can prioritize your resources so that Lagos knows which books to go to first for your personal preference and your personal uh, study style. And so this is going to be a very important way for you to set Lagos up to work for you. And please know that you will be able to do this really well once I show you how to navigate your library better. So we'll come back to that. So the first thing that I want to do is to help give you some tips and tricks on how you can actually organize your library and figure out what kind of books that you have. How instead of trying to look through all these books to find the right book that you need for a certain task, how can you actually narrow down your library and find the book you're looking for even faster? This is just a, a common and a needed skill for using any kind of library, whether it's a physical library or a digital library, but you can do it much quicker here on your computer. So let me show you a couple examples. Here in the details view, I can actually organize my library by type. And to do that, I simply click on the column header that says type. You will notice, I will collapse all these so that we can see them all. So you will notice now that my entire library has been organized by type. And these are predefined types that Logos has created. So for example, if I'm trying to find all my Bibles, I can simply expand this section and see every Bible that I have. If I'm wondering what apparatuses that I have for textual criticism, I can now open that section. Or if I'm looking for commentaries, or if I want to look at, for example, lectionaries or lexicons, systematic theologies, now my library is organized by type, and I can very quickly figure out what systematic theologies do I have available to me. Now, let me show you a, a couple other helpful tips about how you can make this even more effective. When I expand the Bible section, you'll see that we have, uh, in my library, 118 Bibles. Now, some of these are Hebrew, some of these are Latin, some of these are Aramaic. They're in all different kinds of languages. So maybe the question is, well, I just want to know what English Bibles I have. How can I find those instead of having to look through 118 Bibles? Well, we can actually create a subcategory to organize our Bibles by going over to our language column. So you can see the different languages listed here, Latin and Hebrew and Aramaic and so on. And the way that I organize my Bibles by language is by holding down the shift key and clicking on languages, the column header. Okay, now when I go back over to the left hand side, you'll see that my Bibles have all been organized by language. So if I'm in a circumstance or a class where I need to find out what Greek Bibles I have available to me, now all I have to do is come over here to this section and I can see them all very quickly. Same thing with Hebrew or Latin or English. I can expand the English section and now it takes me no time to identify what English Bibles I have available to me, maybe because there's certain uh, versions I prefer or I need to do a comparison of my versions, now I can see very, very quickly uh, what I have um, in my library. Let me give you a couple other examples of how this details view can be used to help you sort your library. So we're back to the original view that we had. All of our resources are organized by title. So they're alphabetical, starting with numbers and then A, B, C, D, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and click on the header type once again and we can see that all of our resources are organized by type. Now when I expand the Bible commentary section, I see I have well over 300 commentaries right here in my computer on my library. Now the question is, how can I use this details view to better find the commentaries that I need? And I'm going to give you two quick examples. First of all, one very common question that I oftentimes hear is, hey, I have all these commentaries, I'm sure some of them are great, some of them maybe not so great. Is there a way that I can figure out what the best commentaries are in my library? Now that's a tough question because everyone has a different opinion and, and people come from different theological backgrounds and so on. But you will notice as we scroll over, I actually have a rating column in my library. This rating column is an average based on the diverse Lagos community, so it doesn't only represent one particular group over another. So I can actually organize my commentaries by rating. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click the column header that says rating. And you'll now see that the stars are 
ordered from uh, the highest rated to the least. So when I come over back to the left hand side, I can easily browse and identify which commentaries are at the top of the list as far as the highest rated. Now this is important because when I'm doing my research, these are probably some of the first ones that I'm going to want to use. And when I'm prioritizing commentaries in my library, I can see which ones uh, more than likely will be the best to put at the top of the list. Now let me give you another quick example. I'm going to organize my library by type. Here we go again. We have all of our Bible commentaries. They are organized alphabetically. One common question that comes up is, is there a way that students can actually identify the most recent commentaries in contrast to the older commentaries? Now, obviously, reading them, you should be able to identify it by the language to some extent. There's a big difference between a 1700s commentary language and a 2010 commentary, but Logos can help you organize your commentaries this way too. So we're simply going to scroll over to the column called publication. So in other words, this is the publication date. Once again, if you don't see the publication date column, simply right click in the headers, make sure that you have publication date selected, and you will be able to see this information. Now, I want to organize my commentaries instead of in random order, you know, or random uh, date order. I actually want to hold down shift and click on publication. You'll see the first time I click, it actually starts by ordering them from the oldest to the newest. I actually want to reverse that. So I'm going to hold down shift and click publication one more time. And now the order of my commentaries is from the most recent to the oldest. So as I scroll back over to the left hand side, now now I'm actually able to view the newest commentaries that I have to the oldest. And the reason why this is so helpful is I can now come up to my search bar and I could type in, for example, Romans. And I'm going to be able to find my newest Romans commentaries to my oldest. And I could do this with Genesis. I could do this with Ephesians. Uh, any book that I'm studying, this view actually helps me figure out what are the newest commentaries I have that are going to have the most recent information and more than likely the most recent research. So learning how to sort your library by type and then even adding in subcategories can help you very quickly identify the books that you need for the research that you're doing. Now let's take this a step further. My library is now organized once again by title. Now you can actually, instead of clicking on these headings, you can use these as search filters for your library. The way that you do this is in your search bar, you take the column heading, for example, type, and then you add a colon. And then after the colon, you now fill in what type of resource you're looking for. So for example, Bible. You will notice now that my Bible has been, or my library, our library has now been filtered down to all our Bible type resources. And if I want to add a subcategory to organize those, I can simply type in, for example, L-A-N-G for language and then English. And now I'm able to see every English Bible that I have in my library. Same thing if a professor asks you to open up a Greek Bible, you could simply put type colon Bible and for language put in Greek. And now you're able to scroll through and identify what Greek Bibles you have and open them up very quickly. If you're looking for a interlinear, simply type in interlinear and now you can see which Greek Bibles you have that actually have the interlinear option built into them. So this is a very powerful and fast way to be able to get into your library, find the books that you're looking for. Now you can use these headings in different ways too. For example, author, we could simply type in author Smith and then all of our books where we have an author with the last name Smith, you can see are going to be listed here and we can quickly identify the book that we want. There are many other columns that you could use to be able to filter down your library, but the main one that I want to spend time introducing you to is this column called Community Tags. Community Tags is one of the most powerful ways for you to be able to identify what resources you have in your library based upon uh, their, their purpose, based upon what their topic is, what they're about. So let me give you a couple of quick examples. First of all, let's say I was in a church history class. 
And I had no idea what books that I have in my library that could help me with church history. I could obviously go to the search bar and just put in church history. And I'm going to need a bunch of books that may or may not be exactly what I'm looking for. Let's say, for example, the very first one, 131 Christians Everyone Should Know. I say, yeah, that's exactly the kind of, the kind of book that I'm looking for. Well, notice in the community tags column, there are different ways this book has been tagged by the Lagos community. It is a book about people, so it's been tagged biography. Maybe I say, hey, I want to see, do I have more books that are biographical? So I can simply come up here into my search bar and put tag colon biography. And you'll notice I actually only have a couple of books in my library that are biographies, but now I've been able to identify those and find them very quickly. So our first one on our list, once again, is 131 Christians Everyone Should Know. You'll notice that we've also got a couple other ways this has been tagged. So we have a history or church dash history or history church. These give me clues that help me identify uh, other books that would fall into these categories. Let's try, for example, church dash history. So we have tag colon church dash history. And I've actually found 43 books in my library that have been categorized as church history books or tagged as church history books. And now if I'm doing research on church history, I can actually work just with this portion of my library instead of searching my entire massive library of hundreds of books. One thing to keep in mind is some tags are going to be used um, more uh, extensively than others. So church dash history, we have 43 books. Let's try history church. So now we have tag colon history church and my list has gone up to 54 books. So in other words, tag colon history church is actually used more extensively than church dash history. So I'm wanting to make sure I can see as many books as I possibly can that are on this topic of church history. And now I've identified that with the tag history church. We can use this in, in many different ways. I'll give you a couple other examples. Maybe for example, you're looking for books on Bible backgrounds. You can simply type in tag colon background and you're gonna be able to see what books that you have on the background of the Bible, old or New Testament. Another good example would be maybe you're wondering what atlases do you have available to you in your library. You can use tag colon atlas and now you'll see a list of your atlases. You'll notice over here in our community tags that all these also have the tag map or there's also images. I could simply come over to tag and change it to map and now Instead of seeing about four or five resources, I've actually got 12 because I've got some things that are map sets that aren't technically atlases. And so this, this particular tag would help me identify far more resources um, than tag colon atlas. So these are just a couple of examples to give you that help you figure out how to find the books you need for different purposes. Another example uh, that we'll actually use in a few minutes would be if I'm doing research on the book of Romans. I could actually go to my library and type in tag colon Romans and that's going to show me every book that I have that is on the topic of Romans because uh, the community has tagged these books as that. So once again, we're going to come back and use all of these skills as we get into how to actually do research and how to search our library. But these are the skills necessary to get you moving in the right direction so that you can find the books that you want and narrow down your searches instead of searching hundreds or even potentially thousands of books. Now let's go to the right hand side of our library panel where it says prioritize. As mentioned previously, you can actually tell Lagos which books you prefer to study out of. So in other words, when you're running a passage search, Lagos knows which Bibles to prioritize. And if you're running a passage guide, the passage guide can actually open up the commentaries in the order that you prefer. Lagos especially needs to know your favorite commentary and your favorite Bible because those are two things that we oftentimes have Lagos open up 
for us. If we're doing word studies, we want Lagos to know what our preferred lexicons are. Or if we're doing research on a, on a topic or a person or a place, we want Lagos to know what our preferred uh, encyclopedia type resources are. So our reference works, Bible dictionaries, Bible encyclopedias, and so on. So you can see on my screen that I have actually taken my top five favorite Bibles and I've drugged them over into this prioritize panel. You could come over to your library and simply put in type colon Bible and then language English. Once again, all you have to do is simply grab the Bible, drag it over there into the preferred resources in whatever order you want them in. Simply let go and your resource will now be prioritized with the rest of them. If you want it in a different order, simply grab it and drag it and move it. If you want to get rid of it, right click or two finger click if you're using a Mac and simply remove it from the list. So you'll want to prioritize at least your five favorite Bible versions because uh, if you run a passage search from the home page, it's going to open up your five favorite Bibles. And if you're comparing Bibles in your text comparison, it oftentimes defaults to your five favorite Bibles. Now you'll see the next category of resources that I have prioritized are my Bible commentaries. So these you can put as many Bible commentaries as you want. Simply list them here. It's very easy to go over to your library and put in type colon commentary. Once again, you could organize these by rating or publication date or whatever, and you simply grab it and move it over and drop it. Now I will give you a, a couple of, of tips on this. First of all, like for example here, I have a commentary on First Chronicles. If I want to prioritize, you'll see this is the Tyndale Bible Commentary. If I want to prioritize this entire set, so in other words, all the Old and the New Testament Tyndale Commentaries, all I need to do is grab one of them and drop them over. If I only want to prioritize one commentary out of that set, I need to right click on that one commentary, and at the bottom of the the menu, I can either prioritize this resource, meaning this specific commentary, or I can prioritize the entire set or series. Okay, simply take the commentaries you want to prioritize, drag them over in the order that you want, and now Lagos knows what order to open your commentaries in. Now, the next set of resources that I have prioritized in my library are my lexicons, and you will see this includes Greek lexicons and Hebrew lexicons. So once again, you could come over to your library and put in type colon uh, lexicon. And now you have the information that you need to be able to find what lexicons you have. Simply once again, drag them over. I highly recommend that you ask your professors, if you're in language courses, what lexicons would you recommend me go to first? Because they're going to have some great recommendations for you. Once again, simply drag them, put them in the order that you want. And when you do your word studies or run your Bible word study guide, you will have your favorite lexicons at the top of the list. Now, after lexicons, I also have devotionals. Devotionals are important to prioritize because your homepage will actually put your devotionals so that every day when you open up Lagos, your favorite devotionals will be there on the homepage. Now Lagos knows to prioritize certain devotionals over others based upon how you've put them here on this list. Simply go to your library, put in type colon devotional, and you will see what devotionals you have in your library. Once again, simply take them over and drop them in your prioritized list in the order that you would prefer. The last type of resource that I have prioritized in my library are my reference works, my Bible encyclopedias and my Bible dictionaries. If you're wondering what resources do I have that fit this category, simply go over to your library, put in type colon encyclopedia. That is the type that we have given these specific uh, types of resources. So your Bible encyclopedias and your Bible dictionaries will be typed encyclopedia. So you could simply scroll through and look through the Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias you have available to you, simply drag them over, and when you're doing a topic guide or um, right-clicking on a location or a person, the, the Bible dictionaries and Bible encyclopedias that are in your right-click context menu or listed at the top of the list will be the ones that you have 
prioritize. So I highly recommend that you take time on your own to, to go through and prioritize the resources that you prefer to use so that Lagos is working for you. It's actually doing what you want it to do. Okay, the next step in our process, we are going to learn how to create a collection. Now you can see on my screen, collections is under tools, so to the left of the command bar, and it's gonna be in the top left of the tool panel. There's a pop-up that explains that collection, the collections tool helps you gather your resources together into groups that are meaningful to you. Now the way I always illustrate this is that when you walk into a library, you don't walk into a big massive collection of random books so that you have to go through every shelf and just start pulling books and try to you know, hope that eventually you'll come across the right one. No, libraries are very organized, right? You know that if you're doing research on Old Testament backgrounds that you wanna to go to the section that actually gives you books that deal with the ancient Near Eastern uh, culture, um, backgrounds to the Old Testament, those types of resources. Or if you're doing research on Paul, you wanna to go to the section that is on Paul, you want to go to the apologetics section if you're dealing with apologetic issues and so on. So Logos actually allows you to create shelves in your library. It's what we call collections. Let me give you a few examples of how you can create your own collections. I'm simply going to click where it says collections and a collections panel is going to open for me. I'm going to take that and fill the workspace with it. Now the first thing you want to do when you're creating a shelf in your library or a collection is you want to give it a title. So for our examples this morning, we're actually going to create three shelves. The very first one that we want to create is a apologetics shelf. So I'm going to call this apologetics. And I simply hit enter and now my title has been created. Now the second thing we want to do when we're creating a collection or a shelf in our library is we want to create a rule. So in other words, you see when we hover over the rule uh, search, it says that here you enter search terms. Your collection will start with every book that matches this query. In other words, this is exactly what we just learned how to do in our library. How do we create a search in our library that will narrow down all the books just to my apologetics resources? Now you may have a good guess in your mind. For our example, we're going to use tag colon apologetics. You'll notice down at the bottom of the collections panel that all our apologetics resources have all been listed for us and now we have an apologetics shelf in our library. Now let me give you a couple of other hints as far as how to use collections. If you ever need to get back to a collection to edit it, simply go to tools, open up the collections panel. You will find the collections under where it says open. So here where it says open, you'll find every collection that you've ever created. You can open them to edit them. You can easily delete them right here from this menu. So this is a very important thing to know. If you have the panel open and you wanna create a new collection, which we do, I'm simply gonna to click to the left of where it says open, where it says new. All right, for our second collection, we actually wanna create a collection on the book of Romans. So I'm gonna call this Romans. And then we want to add our rule. We could, in this case, you could just simply type in Romans, or you could go with tag colon Romans. In fact, for me, I have 10 resources listed that have been tagged Romans. In other words, books that deal with this topic of Romans. They may be commentaries. They may not be commentaries. I'm going to go ahead and add to my rule a comma, and then just type the word Romans. So this is going to add a few additional books. So I, there's a few books, for example, I have a church history book, um, The Apostolic Fathers with Justin Martyr and Irenaeus, where there's actually text dealing with Romans in there, but you'll notice there is no tag in this resource for Romans. But Lagos was smart enough to go through the summary and things like that and to identify that as at least potentially a book dealing with Romans. So I'll go ahead and keep it on the list for now unless I decide I need to remove it later. And if I ever wanted to remove it, I could simply grab the book go bring it over here to where it says minus these resources and drop it and that will take it out of the list for me. So we've created a second collection on Romans. Let's go ahead and create a third one. This one we'll call church history. So I'm creating a church history 
shelf or section to my library now. And very simply, we're gonna use what we learned earlier. And for this one, we're gonna use tag, colon. And do you remember which tag was actually used more extensively than the other ones? It was history, church. So when I put in tag, colon, history, church, now I have a shelf that includes all of my church history books right here on my computer. There is nothing to click to save. All I have to do now is simply close. Now to give you a quick illustration what this allows you to do, we'll actually go to our cover view in our library. Instead of viewing all resources, you could now go down to your church history resources and I can much, easily, much more easily look through 54 books and identify the book that I want as opposed to looking through over 800 and hoping I can find whichever ones are on church history. Or if I'm doing research on Romans, I can now go to my Romans shelf and say, oh, there's that commentary that I'm looking for on Romans and very easily simply click and open it up. So this is a great thing to do uh, to organize your library by collections because now instead of hoping you can find the right book, you can actually just go down to that set of books and look through them and figure out which book's going to be most helpful for you. Now this also has a huge impact on our ability to search. So when we're doing research, we're basically trying to find articles and information on a specific topic, right? Because we're writing a paper, we are trying to collect information, scholarly resources that can help me uh, dig into the, the information uh, that gives me the context I need to write an effective paper. So some of that's going to be primary resources, like, for example, the Bible, if I'm dealing with a, an exegetical paper, even a biblical topic. But we're going to also need resources like maybe systematic theologies or resources like church history books where someone's explaining a certain aspect related to church history or theology and so on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about how we can take all that we've learned so far and how we can search our library more effectively, more quickly, identify the information that we need so that we can write better papers and do it in less time, which I'm imagining is what all of us want to do more effectively. So to do this, you want to go back up to the top left, to the right of where your book icon is, you're going to see a magnifying glass. This is your search. Simply click and Logos will open a search panel for you. Now, as we have explained in the 101, there's actually several different types of searches that you can do. For our example today, we're gonna to be focused on the basic search. Now, once again, I do recommend that everyone spend time looking at the search helps part of the panel where you can actually learn how to build more powerful searching. I will not be spending much time today talking about how to build searches, but I am going to give you some examples. And if you're wondering why did he type it in that way, this is a great place for you to kind of do some research and get a feel for all the different ways you can build powerful and specific searches in the software. So first of all, let's talk about what our example is. Let's say, for example, a professor required you to do research on what the Bible says about slavery. More specifically, he wants you to focus on what the New Testament teaches, Pauline specifically, Pauline writings. What do they teach on this topic of slavery? Now, obviously we could be approaching this topic from different angles. You could be in a Romans class when the professor is asking you to do that. You could be in an apologetics class where they're talking more about defending the faith against key arguments. You could be in a Bible backgrounds class where you're needing to look beyond the New Testament and beyond just the Bible itself into the broader culture. So the books that we want to focus on are going to be impacted by the type of class that we're in. So for our example, I'm going to give you some broad examples and then you can adapt those for your purposes. But when you click on basic search, what you should see is search all text and all resources. For some of you, you may see this, search everything for. The everything search is great, but for our purposes, we don't want to search everything. We don't want to search images and all that type of stuff. We simply want to search all resources. So if you see search everything, you can simply change that to all resources. So to begin, the most obvious way we could search our library is to simply type in slavery, right? And hit enter. Now you'll notice in my library of about 800 books, I've actually found over almost 6,500 places where the word slavery is used in almost 4,000 articles. So in other words, 
4,000 portions of books in my library mention the word slavery. This is actually a good thing because that means I have a lot of content to work with. The problem is that I have too much content to work with and I don't have enough time to actually look through all of these articles. So there's a couple things that Logos is going to do to help us out here. If this is all that you know how to do, one of the best things for you to keep in mind is to make sure that the view that you have it set to is by ranked. What the ranked view does is it actually takes all your results and it ranks them from the articles that have the most condensed discussion on slavery to the least. So in other words, mathematically, which articles have the highest percentage of the use of the word slavery in comparison to the others? Those are going to be at the top. If you have it set by resource, it's going to actually just take all the books and organize them alphabetically. So it's not necessarily saying the top one has the best articles, but it is saying that that is alphabetically the first resource in your library. So that's not necessarily the most efficient way to find what you're looking for unless you already know which books you are most interested in using. So looking at the ranked view, you'll see a couple of important observations. First of all, the very first result that I have in my list is from a concordance. You know, a concordance isn't giving me any explanation of slavery. It's not giving me any discussion. It's just listing all the places where the word slavery is found. So that's not necessarily the kind of resource that I'm looking for. Next, I have an article from the Dictionary of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch specifically, on slavery. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and open it up because that could actually be very beneficial for me because I see information on slavery in the ancient Near East, uh, within Israel, and so on. Now, as I continue to scroll down through here, I'm starting to see some very interesting and not so helpful results. Slavery as addiction from our figurative language glossary. Uh, we've also got, um, for example, white slavery from the English dictionary. Methodists and Baptists are splitting over slavery in 1844. So when I simply type slavery into my search, I'm getting a lot of results that go beyond specifically what the Bible or Paul says about slavery. So now there's, there's ways that we could actually narrow down these articles. There's several different approaches we could take. The first thing that we could do is actually narrow down our search. So let's add more search terms. I'm not simply just looking for articles that talk about slavery in general. How about articles that include slavery? And notice I'm typing it in all caps because I don't want Logos to search for the word and I want it to know that this is an operator for my search. In other words, I'm telling it how to search. So search for articles that have slavery and the phrase New Testament. Now anytime you're looking for a phrase, you want to make sure you put it in quotations. If you don't put it in quotations, Logos will look for articles that have slavery and New or slavery and Testament, but not necessarily just slavery and the New Testament. So once you put it in quotations, Logos knows you want that phrase. So now I'm going to hit enter. Notice we've gone down from thousands of articles down to a little over 600. And as I begin to scroll down through these, I'm starting to find articles that are way closer to the kind of information I need for my research. So I've got a Bible dictionary here that talks about slaves. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And let's see, let's Christian attitude to slavery outside of the New Testament could be a really good article. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that also. Uh, we've got uh, slavery in the Bible dictionary. So that's going to be exactly the kind of article that I'm looking for and so on. So we could continue to go down through the list and find the articles that seem most uh, like the ones that are going to be helpful for us. Let me show you one way that we could step up our articles or our search even more. Some of our articles may not say New Testament. Right, Some of our articles may mention slavery, but only mention slavery and Paul. Now, what we can do is we can actually expand our search to include not just New Testament, but also places where slavery and Paul are mentioned. And the way we can do that is by typing in New Testament or and add Paul. Now, you'll notice that our search is starting to get a little bit more complicated. It's kind of like a mathematical equation. And so you want to make sure that you isolate your OR search. So in other words, we're basically combining two different searches. I want Logos to search for articles in my library that, that have the word slavery. 
but I also wanted to search for articles in my library that have either New Testament or Paul. So when we combine these together, we have articles that either have slavery and New Testament or slavery and Paul. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. You'll see that our article count has jumped up fairly significantly, almost doubled. Why? Because that's telling us that there are actually articles where slavery and Paul is mentioned, but New Testament isn't. And now we've found all those places where either slavery and New Testament or slavery and Paul are there. We could begin to scroll down through and see if there's anything else that jumps out to us as an important article. For our example, I'm simply going to uh, go ahead and click on a couple of these so that we have a few more resources open that we can work with. And opening a few books is a good uh, is a good thing for you to do also if you're following along so that you can actually see uh, how to do uh, some of the tips that I'm going to show you later also. So we've got several books open, several great articles dealing with slavery and the New Testament or Paul and so on. So we have a lot, a lot to work with. Now let me show you a couple other tips and tricks for how you can actually narrow this down. Because we're still working with over 1,300 articles and, you know, because it's set to ranked, hopefully the best ones are going to be at the top, but I may not have time to look through many of these. I need to get down even more specifically to what I need. So that's where our collections can come in handy. Maybe you know that you're in Romans class or you're in a church history class. And your professor actually wants you to do some research on how this issue of slavery in the Bible has been handled throughout church history. Well, in that case, it would make most sense for us, instead of searching our entire library of all kinds of different types of books, what if we just searched our church history books? Well, previously you may not have known how to do that, but now, instead of searching all texts and all resources, you simply click all resources, scroll down to your church history collection, and when you click, Logos will now narrow down all your results just to articles that mention slavery and the New Testament or slavery and Paul in church history books. For example, now I have found a great article in the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church that I did not see before because now I'm actually searching in church history resources. You could do the same thing with apologetics. Maybe you're in apologetics class and you're dealing with this issue more from a perspective of defending the faith. Well, do we have resources that deal with this issue more from that perspective? And of course we do. So instead of searching our entire library, we could search just our apologetics books and we could simply click and open up the, open up the articles that are going to be most helpful for our research. Now, I'm going to change this back to all resources because I want to show you one more tip on how you can narrow down all of your search results to just the best articles. Now this is something that you want to use probably initially in your research or in situations where you're in a major time crunch and you only have a few minutes to be able to find your top three or four articles that you know are going to be dealing specifically with the topic you're searching for. And here's how you do that. Instead of searching all text and all resources, you can actually tell Logos to only search certain portions of text. Now the way I use this when I'm looking for articles that are very specific on a certain topic, I click all text, I expand the search fields section. As I move down through the search fields, in other words, this is what portion of the book do you want Logos to search? I always go and pick heading text. Oftentimes I'll also add large text. So in other words, I'm telling Logos, instead of searching every word of every book, I want you to search just the main headings or just the large text, which is oftentimes like a subheading. So now Logos is going to find any portion of a book where there is a heading that says slavery in the New Testament or slavery in Paul. So if I have anything listed, you better believe that it's going to be on exactly the topic that I'm researching. So as we scroll down through here, I begin to see more and more discussion. Here's a great article on Paul and slavery that we haven't found yet. Christian Attitudes, we found that one already. Um, we've got an article down here from the history of the Christian church, which we actually haven't found yet. And notice that there's an article specifically on Paul and slavery. So now, look at all the incredible number of articles that we have found in a matter of a few minutes by knowing how to search our library and how to narrow down that search 
to the specific books that are dealing with the issue that we are researching and that we're writing on. So now, the big question is, once you find the information you need, how can Lagos help you write better papers? How can it help you get organized? How can it help you write the paper and do better citations and things like that? That's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So to begin with, I want to talk about one tool that's an option for you to help you get organized. One of the trickiest parts about research is being able to keep all your information together. Okay, so one great tool that you could use would be the favorites tool. So once again, under tools, on the left-hand side, the third one down is called favorites. Favorites, when you click on it and expand it, you will see that favorites is essentially a folder system. So if you use something like Microsoft Outlook and you use folders to organize your emails, that's exactly what you're doing with favorites. So we could simply add a new folder and call it slavery in the New Testament. Okay, and then from there what we do is we simply go over to our article, okay, whichever article we want, and at the top where you see the title of the book, that is the tab. All you need to do is simply click on the tab, drag it into the folder. The folder will turn blue when you're ready to drop it. Simply let go and your articles will, will be organized there. Simply grab the article, drag it over to the folder when it turns blue, simply let go. Now, if you want to get more specific in your organizational system, you can actually add a, another folder. We could call this one slavery in the, in the Old Testament. And in this case, instead of having a completely separate folder, we want to drag this into the slavery in the New Testament folder. So now if I find any articles that are specifically on slavery in the Old Testament, I can grab that tab and drag it into that folder. And now I've actually created a subfolder uh, to organize my resources. So that's the favorites tool. Favorites tool has a lot of different purposes. This is one way that you can use it. Now, a second resource that is similar to what we just did in favorites is under documents. This specific resource is called clippings. Okay, it's the second one on your documents list. So once again, under the documents tab, the second one listed is what we call clippings. You'll see the explanation on the screen says clipping, the clippings document allows you to store snippets of text from resources for later use. Now, let me give you a little context for this. For those of you who have ever been taught how to do research, especially uh, maybe you're a little older like myself, the way you were taught to do research is to go into a library and take a big stack of note cards. And on those note cards, as you're reading through, looking through a book, trying to find, hoping to find the articles and the information you need for your paper, you would then collect that information on note cards. So on one side of the note card, you wrote down your quotation or the information that you found. You flip over the note card and then you write down the bibliographic citation. The clippings tool in Lagos is your digital version of your note cards. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the clippings tool. I'm going to drag it over here to the side so that we can all see it. <clears throat> the first thing you want to do with your clipping is give it a title. So in our case, we're going to call it uh, Slavery in the New Testament. Okay, now to add a clipping, we simply go through our articles. So as you're reading your articles, you want to have your clipping open. When you come across something that you want to put on your note card, you simply select the text in the article. Go over to your clipping at the top left. It's going to say add clipping. This is very simple. Now you just simply click add clipping. You will notice that what happened is that Lagos created your note card for you. The note card gives you a title to the article. You can actually edit that if you want to change it. On the left hand side, it's actually going to give you a link to the article. So once you go to your clipping, you can get back to the article very easily. You've got your quotation. You have a place in the bottom where you can add your own personal notes. This is a great place to add notes about why you felt like this quote is so important and how you want to use it in your paper and how it is informing you on this topic as you're reading. On the very bottom right hand corner of the note card, you'll see the information button. Watch what happens when I click that. When I click on the information button, I am automatically provided with the bibliographic information for the specific resource, the specific article in the resource, and I can even choose the format that I need for my paper. I simply copy and paste it, and now I can add that 
uh, bibliographic information to the paper that I'm writing. Now as I'm going through, I can add more and more clippings. So I come across another quotation I want to put on a note card. I go back over to my clipping, say add clipping, and now you'll see I have a new note card. One of the nice things about clippings is you can actually drag these and organize them. So maybe you want to put them in a different order, you can do that. But clippings is a tool that's going to allow you to uh, organize your research, get everything that you want for writing your paper together, then you open up your clippings file, you've got your notes ready, then you start writing your paper, uh, hopefully in a way that's going to be far more efficient than ever before. So that is clippings. Now for those of you who maybe aren't super familiar with Logos, I do want to take a minute and mention this because this is uh, probably one of the, the most exciting parts about using the software, especially when it comes to writing. You'll notice that as I'm going through here, <clears throat> I've come across a quotation. So in the resource on the left hand side, here is a quotation that I know I've got to get in my paper. But then, you know, the problem is, is it's not hard for me to get that into my paper. I can copy and paste it, right? But how am I going to, how am I going to cite it correctly, you know, so that my professor's happy with me and all that. Well, now with Logos, simply select the text you want to put in your paper, copy the text, we're going to go over to a Word document. So imagine this is our paper. I'm going to paste. Logos is actually going to put the exact quotation right into my paper. And you'll notice at the bottom of the page, our citation has automatically been created for us. And I've already got mine set to Turabian. So I have a beautiful Turabian citation um, added to my paper. And my professor hopefully is going to be thrilled with the work that I've done. Two things that I would, I would tell you to keep in mind. Number one, Logos will not add quotation marks for you. So anytime you do paste a quotation into your paper, make sure you go back and add your quotation marks. Second, it is your responsibility to look at the citation and make sure that it is exactly the way your professor wants it. If there is something very specific your professor is looking for, make sure that you add that in. You'll want to look at the citation and make sure you don't see any kind of errors like a misspelled word or a lowercase word that needs to be capitalized. That is your responsibility to double check it and make sure it is the way that it needs to be because more than likely your professor will not allow you to use Logos as an excuse to get you any points back. Now, on that note, how do you set Logos to format your citations properly? Well, if you go to Tools, the bottom of the second column, you're going to see Program Settings. When you click on Program Settings, you'll get the Program Setting panel. Under the first section, which is General, the third one down, you'll see Citation Style. So in other words, when you copy and paste a citation, what style will it be in? All you have to do is come down to the menu and simply choose the style that fits what your school requires, and Logos will do its best to make sure it's putting it into the style uh, that you have asked it to. Now, let me mention one more thing while we're here in the Program Settings. If you are pasting citations or put pasting quotations and noting that the noticing that the citations are actually hyperlinked, in other words, the title is blue and it's underlined and you know that it can't be that way for your paper, simply go to program settings where it says hyperlink copied citations and choose no. Logos will then stop hyperlinking your titles and you don't have to go back and try to reformat those yourself. That will save you a lot of time. Okay. Now on to our next tool. It's also under Documents. And this tool, some of you probably noticed because it's the first one on the list, this is your bibliography tool. This bibliography document lets you actually create a citation list from your library. So there's a lot of different ways you can add books to this. I'm gonna show you a few quick ones. First of all, go ahead and open up a bibliography document. The first thing that you want to do when you're creating a bibliography in Lagos is give it a title. So once again, Slavery in the New Testament. All right, now the question is, well, how do I get books into my bibliography? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. The first way, if we come over to an article, I can actually take a, any, any portion of the article and highlight it. Then when I go over to my bibliography document, you're going to see add up here in the top left. Where it says add, when I click that menu, it says, how do you want to add citations? Well, one option, the very first one, is from selected text. In other words, hey, Lagos, create a citation for me based on 
the article that I have actually selected text in. So when I click on that, you'll see that this article um, on slavery has now, we have, we have a bibliographic citation for it now. And you'll notice that it's also in Turabian format. Now, that is not a bad way. You can build your bibliography as you go. So tomorrow you're doing research, you come across another article, you just simply select some text in it, and you say add this citation to whatever, whatever bibliography you're creating. Notice that we can also add a bibliography where we can add bibliographic information from all open resources. So if you have all of your articles open at one time, all you have to do is simply click this and notice that Lagos has now listed every article that we found and I click sort and now they're all in alphabetical order and all I have to do is simply go up to the panel menu in the top left hit print export and I can copy and paste this or I can go ahead and send it right to a, a, a Word document or whatever I'm using to write my paper. Now just to give you one more example if I was to go back through, and I'm going to delete these real quick just so I can give you one more illustration. If you're writing a paper, for example, on church history, and you need just a very broad uh, bibliography that's dealing with church history, you can actually create that very quickly in Lagos. Remember, we are actually already created a church history collection, so we know what all the church history books are in our Lagos library. Well, I can now say add, add citations from a collection. I click on collection, I go down to church history, and now I'm gonna hit sort just to make sure everything's in alphabetical order. And I have all of my uh, resources on church history. Um, I've got all the bibliographic information, um, all, all created for me already. And now I can add it to the end of my paper and really impress my professors. So. Let me go ahead and show you a couple more things before we end that are really important. First of all, most of your Lagos resources are books that are, first of all, print resources that have been turned into Lagos format. What that means is I can actually come over to this resource, I can go to the visual filters, which are the three dots in the menu, and I can actually turn on the show page numbers option. Just make sure there's a check mark next to that um, option. Now as I scroll down through this article, I will eventually come across a page number. So in this in this specific resource, I know that page 971 in the HarperCollins Bible Dictionary Revised and Updated Edition, I know that page 971 starts right here. And as I'm reading down through the article, I'm wondering, well, what page is this? How do I cite this? All I have to do is say, oh, I'm on page 972. And I make sure and, and use the right uh, page number even though I'm using an electronic resource. It's just like using the printed text. You will notice that, for example, some resources like, like the Lexham Bible Dictionary do not have page numbers, and that's because this is a purely digital resource. There are no page numbers like a print book, so you'll want to make sure you, um, that you look at your manual and you set, cite the electronic resource the way that the manual says you should do that properly. So. What we have done today is we've talked about how to actually take our massive Lagos library and find the books that we need. We don't want all those books just sitting on our hard drive, uh, just getting dusty, so to speak, and not being used. We want to know how to find those books, and we can do that by sorting our library by things like type or, or by sorting it by tag and, and put in tag ministry or tag homiletics and find all the homiletics books you have and so on. We can use all that to actually create shelves or collections in our library and use those in searching so that we can more quickly find the information that we need. Please take advantage of Lagos because it is going to help you write better papers. It's going to help save you time and it's going to help you learn a lot more about God's word, which is what matters the most. So thank you so much for your time. Please use this training and share it with others so that they can get the most out of their Lagos library.